Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. What did we open? Hatchery Spider, not an amazing card. Just a fine curve topper, not more than that. What else? Uh, District Guide's nice. The commons are all pretty mediocre. Dark Blade Agents, decent, but of course multicolor. Roseman Center, also decent for the Celestia decks. The ability is almost always irrelevant. So it's essentially 7 mana for a 5 7 reach, which is pretty pricey. Doesn't line up all that well against some of the counter spells out of the blue decks. District Guide is probably the most flexible pick, since you can play them both Celestia and Golgari, but those are also the guilds you kind of want to avoid usually. If we were stubborn and wanted to draft the Boros, we would probably take the Recruit. If we were stubborn wanting to draft the Mir, we could take the Agent. Informant's a little bit more flexible in that it can go both in the Mir and Izzet, but overall a pretty low power level pick for a pack one pick one. So I think I'm just taking the District Guide here. And who knows, we might end up with a fun uh, gate deck as well. Alright, second Hatchery Spider. It's uh, interesting. There's also Golgari Fine Broker, which I am a lot more excited about than a Hatchery Spider. There's no great Selesnya cards here, not the biggest fan of Flight. So I guess we will be taking this Fine Broker and maybe move into Golgari after all. Dissident is also decent to drop, a lot better than it might appear. But uh, Fine Broker it is, and then hope to wheel Gorgon or Dissident out of this pack. I doubt Hatchery Spider will still be here. Could take a Shaman. It is a reasonable undergrowth enabler, a reasonable tutor for the deck. Probably better than the Dissident here. Best card in the pack overall, definitely Illidaf Champion. So there's still a case for taking the Champion, keeping our options open. That way we can either move into Golgari or Slesnia, depending on which color appears to be more open. Of course, if we end up in Golgari, we'll be happier taking Shaman here than a card we probably don't play. So do we go with a more flexible pick or the more synergistic pick with the cards we already have? Ladef Champion appear next to Chemister's Insight and Enhanced Surveillance. So either way, it's a blue uncommon that's usually next to these. Probably Chemister's Insight that would be taken here. So we want to avoid blue for sure. Green-white has a least overlap with a potential blue drafter. That's passing to us since blue could be Demir, and that means blue black, so we might not get past a whole lot of black cards. Whereas there's no blue white guild in this draft set. The champion is more likely to be in the open guild than the shaman, because both colors might be open. Of course, there's two people passing to us, so one of them might easily be in a white guild. But uh, I think we're still gonna go with the champion here. Definitely a close and interesting pick there. Alright, what do we have here? Best card for a Selesnya deck, unclear, no cards we're really interested in. Best card for Golgari, there's a few more options. I like Burglar Rats, Gorgon's okay. Pilfering Imp usually appears next to Thoughtbound Phantasm and City Watch Sphinx. Or also could have been next to Necrotic Wound or Rock Charger for all we know. Another indication that blue is definitely cut off, so we'll avoid blue guilds if we can. So Gorgon could potentially still go in a Selesnya deck, but not too exciting. I think we usually prefer Rat over Gorgon in the Golgari deck if it comes together. That way we get to play Severstrands as a nice removal spell for 2 mana. And uh, having enough 2 drops is also important. So we'll take the Rat here, be flexible, and kind of see where we end up. There is a Severstrands, which we could take if we wanted to, but I'm not going to take it over Dissidents, which seems like a... A fine card, keeps us flexible since it can still be Golgari or Slaznia. We can usually pick up some Sever Strands later, so we'll take the Dissident for now. Alright, so pretty late in the pack, we still see Centipede, which is fine filler. Wood Shaper for Slaznia would be nice too. So this is kind of where we have to decide. Do we commit to Golgari? Or do we commit to Slaznia? Since we're not taking Pax Favor or Okapi here. So far we don't have reason to believe that Golgari is cut off, since every pack had a reasonable Golgari card in it. We picked Ladef Champion over the Shaman, just to kind of hedge our bets. Turned out that had we taken Shaman we would have had a fine Golgari deck so far, but being flexible is valuable. Since if Golgari was cut off we would have had a nice 
way to start a Celestial deck. So I think we'll take Centipede and get rewarded by a 7th pick Swarm Guild Mage. Even though it's one of the worst Guild Mages, it's still a Guild Mage and it's still great in the late game. Provides a lot of utility. Necrolisk is also playable if you have enough of these Burgle Rats and Generous Trays. Would also be happy with the Guild Gate, but we won't pass the Guild Mage. Alright, 8th pick, we can choose between Sever Strands and Uprising, they do very similar things. Uh, Sever Strands is a bit safer in the face of instant speed removal, since they can't kill your creature in response. Sever Strands a bit worse against counter spells, since you have to sacrifice a creature as an additional cost. And of course 2 mana versus 4 mana is pretty relevant, giving your other creatures death touch can also be relevant and maybe allow for a small attack, but usually I prefer Sever Strands. Alright, so this is our first pack. We wield Rosemain Centaur, so still a sign that Celestia is uh, flowing in this direction as well. Not the biggest fan of Coral Foragers, I usually prefer Douser of Lights, but I'll still play it if we don't end up with any Dousers. And I don't think we need to splash white, even though we could take Guildgate and potentially splash Champion, which is not unreasonable. Splashing a little bit less encouraged than it is in Ravnica Allegiance. Could also still take the Centaur if we really wanted to. But of course then we're passing up on the guild gate, making it more difficult to splash. Center, a fine splash card, especially if we can pick up some shield mates, which are the green and white hybrid two drops, since that can convoke to make white mana, so we don't necessarily need a white land in play to cast a centaur. Otherwise, if you are splashing center, it can be a little bit underwhelming if you don't have the white mana right away, since center is a type of card you want to play on turn four with convoke. So if you don't have that white mana, it gets worse over time, whereas Foragers is still a fine top deck later. Alright, we'll, we'll try it. I don't think we'll miss out on the Foragers. Too much here, happy with another Dissidence. Take a Canopy, sometimes you'll main deck those if you don't have any removal spells. Vigil just in case. Alright, got a late Guild Gate, which is nice. And a Locket, which we're probably not playing, but you never know. Alright, so the first pack went okay. I think I'm happy with the guild we ended up in, since blue got definitely cut off. So taking blue cards would not have gone well for us. And then we still have outs to splashing white. If we open a, an insane Celestia card, we can potentially still move over. Although we've got some nice Golgari cards with Guild Mage and Fine Broker here that we would prefer to stick to Golgari. All right, well, opened a nice uh, Chamber Sentry. Fine card even in a two-color deck, but of course gets better the more colors we have access to. Otherwise, we're looking at maybe a Generous Stray, which I'm also a fan of. Not much else. So I think we'll take the Chamber Sentry and hope to wield Generous Stray. And now... Now we get that Shield Mate that I was talking about earlier. Not an exciting second pick compared to all these powerful uncommons, but uh, no Golgari or Selesny uncommon in this pack. So do we take a shield mate? Probably better than Worm at the moment. Leaves us a bit more open. Alright, we can take our third dissident. Second shield mate. Can take a Gateway Plaza for fixing, even though I'm not the biggest fan of it. In a deck with all these two drops that kind of wants to curve out. Or we can take a Dowser if we're committing a bit more to Golgari. And then there's also Siege Worm as another curve topper. Not the most exciting card, but it's kind of replaceable with uh, the six mana Worm in Golgari. I, I think I can get behind the Siege Worm. Could use a bit more top end, and we can play it in whichever version of the deck we end up in. So it's kind of a safer pick than Dowser. And then we can probably wheel one of these two drops anyway. Alright, another Rosemain Centaur. There's also Rock Charger, which is a great white card. And then there's another Jenner Stray if we wanted to be stubborn and stick to Golgari. So this one's also a pretty big decision. We had a, an interesting decision earlier when we picked Centipede over Woodshaper and kind of committed more to Golgari. But the way the panks broke, we might still hop back into Selesnya, since Rock Charger is pretty strong. So right now the black cards are Rats, Guild Mage, Strands, Centipede and Fine Broker, so it's not like we're super deep into black. 
and the white cards are champion and rosemane centaur and we already have a guild gates i do want to avoid being like a straight up three color deck some of these cards are still splashable although not all that much champion is definitely splashable if we're splashing white center a bit less and most of the black cards we don't really want to splash rock charger is very good alongside the big green creatures if they can't answer it so all right we'll take a rock charger and then hope to wheel some more rosemane centaurs and hope that uh, we can settle into a nice Celestia deck after all and probably means we want to take the shield mate here over canopy or foragers uh, not the biggest fan of peacemaker the alternative is a 10th district guard or a silent dart so we might still want a peacemaker don't think we want hunted witness i mean it is a cheap creature that can enable convoke but we only have the one rosemane center that cares about it and a siege worm all right definitely taking the guild gate here over ladef guardian And now, in an interesting pick, we can take Woodshaper, which is a reasonable 4-drop. A little bit low impact, but if we can pick up some Luminous Bonds, it gets quite a bit better. Or we can take Guildgate to kind of keep the, the splash option available. Do have to make up our minds pretty soon on how the deck is going to look like. If it's going to be just a pure Selassian deck, or maybe a Golgari deck splashing white. Or uh, if we were going to go with a Devil's Mana base and just play straight up three colors. How many four drops do we have? Not that many. So Witch Shaper would be an okay addition. Yeah, Root can help us ramp and kind of fixes our mana. But we don't have a ton of stuff to ramp into is a problem. And if we don't draw the Root and rely on drawing a Root to fix our mana, it's also not a great recipe. If we, for example, took those Spiders at the start of the draft, then Root would look a lot better. But right now we curve out with a Siege Worm, which has Convoke. And a Center, which has Convoke. So our most expensive cards are like 3 and 4 mana. So we don't really want Root in that deck. I'm actually leaning Wood Shaper. And kind of pivot back into Selesnya. So how would our Selesnya deck look like? I mean, we could maybe splash the Guild Mage, I suppose. Can be still pretty impactful if there's a board stall. So this is kind of our Celestia deck. Not too exciting. But it's not like the Golgari deck looks much better. We're lacking removal in both versions of the deck. Just have a Sever Strand and that's it. The Celestia deck can break board stalls with Rock Charger. Dissidents can be 4-4s. Four and we've got the Champion that can break board stalls as well. In Golgari we have a Guild Mage. So we might end up in a three-color deck anyway. Just because we don't have enough tools in a single two-color combination. But given the fact that we don't have any fours, I'm kind of leaning towards Wood Shaper here. And now we can take a Color the Culprit as a potential removal spell. Not the most exciting in a best of one. But it beats the Loxodon, I think. All right, another decision here. Can take a Righteous Blows, cheap removal. Pretty good against the Boros decks, which are pretty popular. Or we can take another Curve Topper in Vuggers for Worm. Could use more Curve Toppers, so Worm wouldn't be bad. Even though I prefer Convoke creatures to be my Curve Toppers if we end up in Celestia. And having a cheap removal spell like Righteous Blow is pretty useful against Boros, especially against those flying creatures like Sky Knight Legionnaire. Yeah, we do have a demotion in the sideboard, but I don't intend to play it. I think I'm leaning Righteous Blow. The Worm is just more replaceable. We could pick up another Siege Worm. Alright, probably have to take the Gateway Plaza here. And I will take a Renewal. So this draft's not going great. We were kind of forced into the green guilds. And they haven't really delivered. But we are still somewhat flexible in that we could still pivot into both Golgari or Selesnya, depending on which powerful rare we open in the last pack. Well, we opened an quote-unquote on-color rare in Temple Garden. Would help us fix our mana somewhat. Is there any 
playable that we're excited about. Not really. If we want it to be Golgari, there's Playcrafter, but Playcrafter's not even all that good in Limited. They just sacrifice a random 2-drop that's not doing anything. So I think we will take the Temple Garden. Now we finally get rewarded. Trostani, easy pick. Hope to wheel. Rosemane Centaur. So it's looking more and more like we want to just be pure Slaznia. At which point... Uh, we probably want to take the patrol over the generous tray. We're lacking four drops. Don't have a ton of creatures that we can mentor onto with the patrol, necessarily. Does make our rock charger bigger if we can pick up some generous trays. They combine well with patrol. But I think we still want the flyer here. Alright. Could take a third... Dissident, or another Selesnya Guild Gates. I already have two Guild Gates and a Temple Garden. There's also Blade Instructor as another aggressive 3-drop, or a Take Heart as a combo trick. Alright, so this is kind of the point where we want to start laying out the deck to have a better idea how it actually looks like, whether or not we need to play these black cards, or if we can get away with pure Selesnya. Don't have all that many black cards. The most exciting one's the Fine Broker, which is double black. And even though we do have a bit of fixing with District Guide, the Guild Gates, and the Plaza, it's still going to be ambitious to fit Fine Broker into this deck, I think. So I think we're probably just cutting the black. Maybe splashing a Swarm Guild Mage, could see that. But definitely not playing Fine Broker. Maybe Sever Strand splashable too, if we don't end up with any removal spells. So in that deck, what do we prefer? How many playables do we have? We've got four lands, so we have around 23 playables. That's with a main deck crushing canopy and sprouting renewal and a locket, which I would prefer to cut. We've got a reasonable amount of two drops. Foragers I would also prefer to cut. Color of the culprit is also very cuttable. So we still need to pick up some more playables, but if the draft ended right now, we would still be able to put together a somewhat playable deck. So the question really is, do we want more mana fixing in Guild Gates? Do we want the trick in Take Heart or one of these two creatures? Instructor's not bad, plays well with our Rock Charger, and that could easily let us cut one of these weaker 3-drops. Wouldn't mind a trick like Take Heart, even though we would prefer a Might of the Masses or the other Convoke Pump Spell. And we already have a decent amount of 2-drops, including two Dissidents, so I'm not too Worried about taking another one, so I think I'm gonna go with a Blade Instructor here. But it's definitely not a close pick. Alright, there's a Might of the Masses I was talking about, as well as Pax Favor. Definitely prefer Might of the Masses here. So we'll be taking that. And now we can take another Rosemane Centaur, which is pretty nice. Alright, so we settled into Selesnya nicely. Didn't end up getting too many great Golgari cards at the end of the day. Swarm Companions could be okay here. It's just a, a cheap Convoke Enabler. Joint Shields is kind of expensive and difficult to keep up. So I'm not the biggest fan. Alright, got another Wood Shaper anyway. Do we want... Second Wood Shaper or Ladev Guardian. Uh, I guess the aggressive Boros deck, so turn 3 Guardian can be useful. But we already have so many 3 drops. So let's make some cuts. Uh, might have to play the Canopy since we're kind of light on removal. Renewal and Locket can definitely go. Not sure about Color. Forgers can go. And then I'm not sure if we want to splash black for the Sever Strands and Guild Mage or not. We are looking okay in terms of 4-drops, if you count Centaur as a 4-drop most of the time. So don't necessarily need another Wood Shaper. So I guess we can take a Guardian here. And I'll happily take another Centaur. 
play as many of those as I can get. Take an uncommon for the vaults, since we're not playing any of those. And we're also not playing any of these. There's a small chance we need to vine as convoke filler. Alright. So, don't have the most exciting deck, but getting that Trostani definitely helps. So let's take a look. Yeah, playing black might just not be necessary. Can just cut the guild mage, cut the strands. Don't need the gateway plaza. Um, could maybe get away with 16 lands since they're only actual 5 drop is Trostani. So right now we have 17 lands, so we could cut one. We also have a district guide can, that can search up a land. Chamber sentry is a reason to maybe still play the plaza or a single swamp, but sentry is a Two drop is still totally fine. So if we cut a land, we've got a 40 card deck. Some two drops, some three drops. The two drops being pretty key at just helping us convoke a centaur early. This is more of a three drop as well. We've got a bit of evasion with patrol and rock charger. Bit of interaction with righteous blow and might of the masses. Crushing canopy can kill flyers. But for the most part, we're just trying to play early Rosemane Centaurs and hope that uh, is good enough. So I think this is our deck. Then the mana base. Do we have more green than white? It's pretty even. We have how many guild gates? Two guild gates and a temple garden. This should be okay. Mana base should be pretty solid. Alright, I think uh, this will be our deck. Alright. Alright, so we've got a uh, Turn 4 Rosemane Centaur and a Trostan in our opener, so looks good to me. Opponent's pretty committed to Golgari. Suppose we could have showed them the planes, so they still think we maybe are on Boros. Alright, opponents in the three-color deck themselves. They're not attacking. That's good. So might as well attack first. See if they block. Even though I don't really want them to block. Alright, they accept the trade. Fair enough. Still have a district guy to help us convoke Centaur next turn, so I think that's fine. And we'll get... Forced, I guess. Don't want to get a gate since we want to curve Centaur into Trostani. Opponent did nothing with quite a bit of mana available, so... Burgle Rats, sure. Do we ditch Shieldmate or Woodshaper? We can play Shieldmate alongside Rock Charger, can do the same with Woodshaper, but Woodshaper is a nice two for one, can find us more creatures with Trostani. So I guess we'll ditch the Shieldmate. Definitely jamming Trostani next turn, unless something weird happens. This looks like a Sever Strands. All right. Less likely that they have an answer to Trostani now. Sometimes it can be nice to play Trostani when you've got a bigger board in play. But uh, I think it curves out a bit better if we just play Trostani on 5 there. So we can attack and then... Could play ro Rock Charger, could play Wood Shaper. Could play Rock Charger alongside a 2 2 Sentry, which seems decent. No Flash creature we need to be concerned about. Step our mana properly. I guess opponent could have a fine finality that they're sandbagging. It's kind of the only concern here with overextending or a Ritual of Soot. Since they have been playing a little bit suspiciously, I guess we can play Wood Shaper since that replaces itself anyway. 
All right, and we'll take probably Blade Instructor since it pairs well with Rock Charger. Yeah, this way we still have Lethal next turn without overcommitting into a sweep effect. All right, that'll do it. Oh yeah, Blade Instructor plus uh, Chamber Sentry is pretty nice too. All right, we're on the board at least, which is nice. All right, so what about this one? Seems fine, turn two Sentry, turn three Companions, turn four Centaur, hopefully. Giving away the fact that we have Chamber Sentry in hand by holding priority. Harpooner can block patrol at some point. So let's read Chamber Sentry one more time. So pay Axe, remove Axe counters to deal Axe damage to any target. Could just trade for a Harpooner here, which is not unreasonable, since the companions will still provide ample bodies for Convoke. We do have a Perhelion Patrol, which could maybe put another counter on the sentry after one use, and our opponent also wants to enable Undergrowth, so that incentivizes them to trade. But the Harpooner can also block the patrol later. So I think we're fine with the trade. And the Golgari deck is not going to have a ton of low toughness creatures that are super important that the sentry needs to kill, outside of maybe Bartas and Bats. Gorgon can potentially trade for a centaur, so we might play patrol first. Don't really want to trade. Alright, I did have the Bartism Bats, which also explains why they were so eager to trade the Crawl Harpooner for the Chamber Sentry. I think it's still fine here, since we get to attack and play patrol. So let's attack. Might see a removal spell on patrol. Hopefully that's not the case. And then we can have a turn where we maybe get to play multiple Rosemane Centaurs in the same turn. Definitely Rosemane Flooded here. Could also attack with a token and patrol, trade patrol for bats, have a 2-2 token left over. And then we can still play a Centaur. Don't quite have enough to play both Centaurs in the same turn here, sadly. And we do see a trade. Alright. Well, now our hope is our opponent doesn't have a creature large enough to block the Rosemane Centaur profitably. I guess we might as well Convoke. Do want to keep maybe a land in hand in case of Burgle Rats. Alright. It's unfortunate. So now we'll have a board stall. And a Prey Upon. Could have been a bit risky in the face of one open mana. Alright, so now the trades don't look great. Now the opponent played a Lurcher. Can play both Centaurs, but we can double block the Lurcher. So what are we hoping for? Trostani, of course, pretty high up on our list. More flying creatures. Rock Charger. Or our Color the Culprit to kill the Lurcher. I think we have to double block here. Could maybe take five and wait a turn to double block with the Rosemane Centaurs instead. So far so good, I guess. Get to play Dissidents into Centaur, might as well empty your hand at this point. So no need to Convoke. I 
there is still a reason to keep a land in hand. For example, if we pick up something like a Might of the Masses that we don't want to use right away, and our opponent plays a Burgle Rat, then having the land to discard instead could be useful. But if they Burgle Rat us right now, we would rather just have the land in play. That way it kills Dissidents. Play Crafter trades for Centaur. Alright, so all our cards kind of traded. We drew a few more lands than the opponents. So they still have a Gorgon in play. But overall, a pretty even game. So we already drew all the Rosemane Centaurs, so we don't have a ton of beefy creatures left. Still have a Dissident. So the question here is, do we want to trade or just take it? I think I'll take two for a turn here, kind of see what we draw. Maybe we draw something that we can mentor onto. Alright, opponent goes for Deadly Visit. I think I'm happy with that result. Yeah, we do still have a Siege Worm. Siege Worm, Trostani are kind of our heavy hitters that are left in the deck. Dissidents. Alright, do we trade now? They might just stay back on defense, and that's what they do. Alright, Rock Charger's nice. So next turn we can fly over for 5 damage. Opponent holding a bunch of cards here, could be more removal. Prey Upon. They're uh, putting those Prey Upons to good use, that's for sure. Usually Prey Upon, not a super exciting card. Wood Shaper was not bad. And yep, that's the Siege Worm. So knowing we have a Siege Worm now, do we want to trade Dissident for Gorgon? Um, I guess we have to get past it at some point. Yeah, Burglar Rat would be unfortunate. So we might get punished for playing that land a few turns ago. Alright, no Burglar Rat, that's good. Opponent might just be flooding out, holding a bunch of lands. Or they want to keep the removal spell for the Siege Worm. But then they probably would have traded Gorgon for Dissidents. I don't think we pump. Play Worm and now I think I'll keep the land in hand. In case we need to sandbag one of our more conditional cards for a turn or two. Child of Knights. That's fine. Color. It's going to be useful later. So for now we can just attack with everyone, I think. Could also keep Woodshaper back to trade for Child of Knights, since trading 2 damage for 2 lifelink damage is not the best. Opponent might trade anyway, thinking we have another creature we can play to block the Child of Knight to begin with. Don't have many reasons not to attack with the Siege Worm into the Gorgon, since we don't have many answers to the Gorgon in our deck. I think we'll attack like this. Alright, trades seems to be happening. And we'll pump. Cut them down to five. Still a removal spell for something large in hands. And a dissident that's beating down for four. Not sure what their opponent's holding. But uh, we will trade. Silent darts, which can take out the dissident here. So once again, we're at parity, although we have exhausted most of our good top decks. Outside of maybe Trostani. Presumably we drew a few more lands on the opponents. Righteous Blow would have been a reason to not attack with a Worm into the Gorgon. That's a card I didn't think about. So maybe punished a little bit for that attack. Bats, we can easily Righteous Blow. And hope they don't have a Pump Spell. And a Chamber Sentry requires 5 mana of different colors to be returned. 
So that won't be happening anytime soon. All right, Wood Shaper into Trostani. Yep. Alright, let's see if they have another answer here. Don't have a ton of cards remaining. Beetle. So we can destroy it with color now. And get in there. So this ended up being a super grindy game. But we might be able to get there. Alright, sweet. Two and zero with Selesnya and Trostani cheering us on. Hand looks quite good. Rock Charger alongside Roseman Centaur. Up against Izzet. With a Guild Mage. Alright. I think we'll attack and play Rock Charger here. We can attack first either way, unlikely their opponent trades. By having the Rock Charger already in play, we will be able to give the center flying the turn after we play it, which is pretty valuable. All right, I think we're into Rock Charger here. And then next turn we can play the Centaur. Don't know if we'll block yet. If they attack us here, gotta think about Sure Strike and other various combo tricks. Alright, opponent's gonna go on the aggro plan here with Sonic Assault. I'll happily trade Shieldmate for Guildmage, given the chance. It's time to play Centaur. And then next turn we can play maybe a Ladev Guardian. Hypothesis, all nice answer to Centaur. And wow, our opponent concedes. Maybe they drew all lands. It's the only explanation I have there. Alright, I'll take it. Alright, uh, I think we can keep this. We've got a guy to find a fourth land. It's not the most exciting hand, but. It's got a bit of interaction with Righteous Blow and Canopy. Hopefully we draw into a Roseman Centaur soon enough. Gotta make sure to play the Guild Gate on turn one here. Alright. Play a Dissidence. Up against the Gruul. It's not a... An archetype you often run into in this draft format, but I think we'll play a district guide for now. Get a planes. And next turn probably play Wood Shaper, unless we need to maybe double spell companions and righteous blow. Alright. Companions into Trostani is also tempting. But I think we'll Wood Shaper. Alright, well, a nice 2 3 4 curve into Trostani can definitely win us a game. Halkite Whelp. Luckily, we can put our Wood Shaper out of range. Otherwise, we also have the Crushing Canopy. Down to eight. And they need an answer to Trostani. 
Well, I'm getting some quick games here. For a no. Missing our white mana here. So we might have to mulligan this one. Alright, I'll take it. And we want to keep a wood shaper. I think so. After a mulligan we need to find more action. We only need one land for the wood shaper to become live. We want more creatures for might. But we did draw the land, so we should be good to go. Alright, hopefully no bodyguard here. Alright, no 3-drop. That's good for us. Color the culprit, often a death card against Boros. Depends whether or not they play a bunch of auras to make their creature bigger. For mana. Could be an answer to the champion. It's gonna be a hammer dropper. That one we cannot kill with color the culprit, sadly. But we can block it with the wood shaper, which is I think our plan. Do we attack with the champion's a question? It's pretty bad if they kill Woodshaper and hit us, so I think we'll keep the champion back and trade it if we have to. Could also play Guardian since it blocks the recruit after it gets mentored onto, so that's also a reasonable play. I guess playing Guardian's not bad. We don't make use of the Convoke, but I think I'm fine trading Ladef Champion for Hammer Dropper as well. And this way we have a good blocker for recruit, so we might even see a no attack from the opponents, which would be ideal. And if we play Woodshaper and opponent has something like a Cosmotronic Wave, we're gonna be sad. Whereas that's a little bit less so with uh, Guardian. Alright, Barging Sergeant. That's rough. So you get to Mentor twice. Well, at least we've got one good block. Could attempt to double block with Witch Shaper and Guardian still have Might of the Masses up. As interaction seems okay. So I guess we'll see what we draw here. Rose Main Centaur seems good. Could also play a 1 1 Chamber Sentry. Think I would rather keep a Might. I'm fine trading these two creatures for Sergeant, and then we have Might of the Masses should something go wrong. Hopefully that one thing is not a sure strike, since that could be pretty painful. I don't think I pulled the trigger. Alright, take heart, that's fine. So we can respond with Might of the Masses. And they still trade, so that was totally acceptable. Alright, so we get to hit our land drop, play sentry for two and convoke a centaur. Alright, so we're on the board, I had on board for the first time. And still have a color in hand for something big, which is probably not going to happen out of the Boros deck, but you never know. Alright, Luminous Bonds on the Centaur. So we can use Sentry to take out Recruits. It's probably acceptable. We can use it at instant speed, but then if we want to play around a Pump Spell, we might want to use it now. Then again, they could play a Sky Knight Legionnaire, and then we want to use a Sentry to kill that instead, I think. I guess we'll kill it now.
All right, true fire captain. Sadly, we can't kill with the collar. So that's definitely a problem. Land's not going to help us. We could block it temporarily with the uh, sentry and then shoot the opponent for one to absorb four damage. That's something we might do here. Just to buy ourselves a bit of time. Hoping to see some sort of enchantment on the captain so we can kill it with color. Could also take four here. It's not unreasonable. They might play another one toughness creature and then we regret spewing the sentry. So no blocks. Alright, no play from the opponents. Flooding out a little bit. And I think now we're probably forced to chump. Alright, at least they're not adding anything to the board. Patrol. So now we're faced with kind of the same decision. I think we have to take it now because we want to give ourselves the out of top decking something, although the ability from the captain means that uh, if we go down to three, it's going to be almost impossible to actually kill the captain by blocking since we'll end up taking a bit of damage as well. Some lifelinking blockers might survive. Ornery Goblin. All right, there's a life-linking blockers that we were asking for. But still a pretty steep uphill battle here. And our opponent might have been sandbagging a uh, Cosmotronic wave as well, which would kill us here. What if we double block here? Block here. We gain one up to four. This would work and would kill the captain, but that leaves a 3 2 ordinary goblin in play. But it might be our best chance to get rid of the captain and then hope to top deck a big blocker for the goblin next turn, which we have more often answers to captain. And if they have a plus two plus two pump spell, for example, we blow them out with color. I think this is reasonable. Sadly, we don't gain one life from this token since it dies to the ability. But if we don't block, we're dead, so we have to. Alright. So up to four, down to one. Yeah, that's bad. Not sure if we have any outs outside of Trostani now. They should have considered playing that before attacking to save the captain. Alright, GG's. If they did play pre-combat, they would have gotten... Uh, Destroyed by the color of the culprit, of course, so pretty key that they didn't actually play it there But it would make sense for them to do it to save the true fire captain not let us double block All right, do we have a keeper on the draw? I think we do Maybe another Boros deck All right, Challenger is not what we wanted to see on turn two, since we can't Righteous Blow it. Maybe they play Sky Knight Legionnaire that we can kill. Glaive of the Guild Pact, all right. Take two. Trostani is not bad. And they're not even offering, so that's good, I guess. I think we'll play a Rosemane. And then curve into Trostani. Might also play the patrol first, we'll see. Garrison Sergeant, so our opponent's going a bit bigger than the usual Boros deck. Against the typical Boros deck, Trostani would be almost lights out against a double-striking sergeant that's about to gain menace. 
and Vigilance, we might be in a bit of trouble here. Can play Trostani, Rosemane still gets to attack. I guess that's where we start. And hope to trade Centaur for Sergeants. Opponent takes it. Alright, we'll see here. Do have a Righteous Blow that could come in handy, but they've got all three Toughness creatures at the moment. Candlelight Vigil. We can destroy with a Crushing Canopy, so if they aren't careful we might be able to get them. Alright, so we probably have to block the Sergeant with the Centaur, hope they don't have a trick. And then take five from the Challenger. Otherwise we could double block the Challenger and we might also be okay there. At that point we can also just triple block I suppose to gain two more life. What happens if we take five? Next turn we can canopy the Vigil and then we can mentor onto a token with the Instructor. I think that might be better. I think we'll just block like this. All right, they don't appear to have any tricks. So we'll start by attacking. Guess we don't have to attack with all the tokens. Just like this, Mentor. They block, we can canopy. I guess we should let damage happen first here. And then we can still canopy. Challenger dies. And then we'll play Shieldmates. Alright, so don't feel too bad about our spot now. Can take to the skies with patrol. We're significantly ahead on board at 16 life. And we can Righteous Blow the Blade Instructor. Alright, so I think this is a case of Attack with everyone but Trostani. Could even attack with Trostani as well, but that's a bit a bit suspicious maybe. Yeah, we can leave Trostani back on defense, I guess. Alright, they want to keep the instructor around. Don't think we need to kill the fire urchin. I want to keep the righteous blow for the instructor here. Ooh, Light of the Legion. That's a good one. A big flying creature is not what we wanted to see. So maybe had we attacked with Trostani last turn, gotten in one extra damage, put them to five. This turn an attack with all would have been lethal. I guess we can see what we find with Woodshaper first. Ladev Guardian. So I guess we can just go wide and attack with everyone next turn. Could be reasonable too. Stake a Guardian for now. And tap, probably a token. All right, opponent uh, has seen enough. With an opponent at six, they were in no position to really make any attacks. We could just build up a giant board and then at some point attack with everyone and get there. So yeah, it's definitely possible that we should have attacked with Trostani the turn before because then I mean, they would have taken one more damage potentially and uh, could have killed them on the way back but I don't think it's unreasonable to keep Trostani back there either. All right, five and one, not bad. All right, on the play, I think we've got a keeper, two two drops essentially, some interaction, Blade Instructor. And which two drop to lead with? Probably Chamber Sentry, if we can curve Sentry into Instructor, we can mentor onto it, which is pretty powerful. Up against Demir, and they've got a house guild mage. All right, so I think we attack. If they block, I guess we could also play the tenth disregard to get a clean attack, but I kind of want to play the blade instructor here. Could also play blade instructor, no attacks. 
depends how much your opponent values their guild mage. Don't really want to trade the chamber sentry with the guild mage, but there's a chance they don't block if we attack with the sentry here. I think we attack. Opponent takes it, perfect. And now hope they can't uh, put up any great blockers or killer creatures. Opponent on Asper. Failed Shade, sure. That's fine. So, Disregard doesn't change a whole lot, so we're probably just gonna Righteous Blow in and play Shieldmate here. Attack with both. Alright, look at that synergy. Putting an extra counter on the sentry. Put on blocks. I think we just Righteous Blow to keep our Instructor around. Get in for three. Play a Shieldmate. And now we've got a 3-3 sentry that can shoot down a potential blocker. Now we can keep growing the shield mate with the instructor. Guild mage attacks, we'll take it. Ooh, Rosemary Centaur too. I mean our opponent's probably trading for the blade instructor here. So we'll attack here. That's fine. Alright, 5 mana into Crawl Swarm. Looks pretty bad compared to our Chamber Sentry. So we can shoot it down, play a Dissident attack. It's been a while since we've played with Walking Ballista, but that's how it feels like. And we're pretty close to just burning them out with the Chamber Sentry as well. Disinformation campaign. Ditch Wood Shaper. Passwall Adapt doesn't do a whole lot here. What if we kill the Guild Mage with the Sentry? Attack with everyone. I guess then they would be dead. Yeah, I guess, I guess it works. Attack with everyone. We essentially get to deal one more damage this way, which is just enough to get them dead. Sweet. Alright, ranked up. So we're 6 and 1 now, I believe. Alright, one more game to go. Alright, we've got Tristani in our opener, reasonable curve, so this is a keep. Ooh, Pilfering Imp can take away our Tristani, so that's unfortunate. So we've got a hope that they don't uh, go for it. I think we still play the shield mate, even though there's a chance we could righteous blow the imp. Can do it next turn, perhaps. Alright, that way it's sure. Imp attacks. So now we're forced to play a disregard and hope to righteous blow the imp. Midnight Reaper means they get a bit of value here. But I think it's still worth it to protect our Trostani. So 
So don't really want to trade stuff when we have the Might of the Masses and Trostani in hand. We'd rather build up a bigger board. Although it's not super likely that they block or guard with the Reaper here, even though they would get to draw an extra card. I guess we will attack. And then we have to decide between Woodshaper and Guardian. Guardian blocks the Reaper better if they don't block here. All right, opponent takes it. So we'll be playing a Guardian. Centipede. All right, Rock Charger's not bad either. So I don't think we're attacking here. And this will maybe force a removal spell on the Rock Charger, which will save Trostani. Undercity Uprising, so if we Might of the Masses, we would uh, still force a trade. Opponent, of course, still gets to draw a card from Reaper, but we would get rid of the Centipede, which might be worth it. All right. Still no Trostani time, so we'll just have to play the Centaur for now. Yeah, Midnight Reaper is a pretty good card too, as it turns out. Alright, opponent's got a pretty full grip, five cards in hand. And a 4-3 Reaper. Sadly, we've got a pretty removal light deck, so getting rid of the Reaper is not gonna be an easy task. Crawl Foragers, all right. Could be worse. Chamber Sentry would have been a way to get rid of the Reaper before the Centipede happened. So I guess we'll just play Wood Shaper for now. Don't really want to trade Center for Foragers when we have Trostani coming up. Take another Centaur. Don't have the mana to play it. Forger's attacking. It's kind of a strange attack. Maybe they're setting up a find finality and gonna wipe the board anyway. But I don't think we can beat that card anyway, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. I think we take it. Swarm Guild Mage. Well, at least now we will be able to get uh, land for Trostani. And I think we will attack with the Centaur into the Reaper. I doubt I'll trade. Still not ideal, since next turn with Trostani Center would become a 5-5 outside of range from Reaper and Forager, so maybe we do just hold back. Play Guide, get a Lance, Convoke a Centaur. Could be fine too here. Let's see here. Definitely an interesting spot. We're definitely counting on this Trostani to turn the game around for us. Get a nice big chunk of damage in. Moodmark Painter. That's fine. Yeah, we could have maybe played Sentry as well last turn, but that would have been bad if they had a Burglar Rat as their last card. Sever Strands. Pretty good here with the Reaper in play. Don't feel inclined to trade. All right, finally time for Trostani and Color was not a bad top deck. And we're just gonna send in everyone. Do have to be careful with the uh, Guild Mage and Menace. All right. Opponent chumps down to eight, draws the card. And we'll pass the turn. Alright, so it's not looking bad. And yep, there's a finality that I kind of suspected they had. Up 
but uh, yeah, we weren't beating that card. So we got them down to six. I can kill the Reaper finally, but getting those last six points of damage in is going to be pretty tough. Yeah, finality is probably the best card against us there. So, do we have any flyers left that can maybe fly over to get those last, last points of damage in? Still have the patrol, I guess. So that's one way. Necrotic wounds, sure. Got them down to five, but they've got far five cars in hand, which are probably going to be enough to get across the line here. Yeah, the Midnight Reaper and then the Finality definitely won them the game. All right, GG's. Oh well, still uh, could win the last one here. On the draw, but we've got a reasonable hand. Turn to Dissident, turn three Guardian, hopefully turn four Centaur. Up against Boros. This Might of the Masses is going to be pretty important. It's going to be a Legion War Boss. At least we get to block the 1 1 here. So we'll be able to get on the board pretty quickly with these Centaurs and then use Mito the Masses to maybe blow up a double block situation. Alright. Plug the war boss. They probably have a pump spell here. Still get to play our Rose Main. And try again next turn. And hope they don't have more pump spells lined up. Next turn we can play center and maybe Mido the Masses. Luminous Bonds, that's bad. Yeah, this is going to be a very big swing. Six damage. Falling further and further behind. At least we can still use the Centaur for Convoke. So we can Convoke and keep up Might of the Masses. And probably got to keep the Dissident back. Yeah, Warballs backed up by Interaction. It's tough to beat. That's brutal. Opponent played one creature this game, and we're somehow at four life. So don't know if we can uh, survive the next turn here. Can play another Rosemain Centaur. Do get to attack for four at least. But I'm pretty sure we're dead here, since they get to make an extra 2-2. We only have three blockers. So Rosemain it is. And hope they respect maybe a Righteous Blow instead. Because if they don't have lethal, then they are giving up most of their board. It's going to make it easier for them to go for it. Yeah, nothing we could do here. Alright, it's too bad. Ended our run at 6 wins. Yep, 
Yeah, we really needed a Righteous Blow there to survive. So, got punished for our removal light deck, essentially. Despite having a ton of blockers, our opponent just had the right interaction to keep attacking. Oh well, Legion War Boss is a rare. Sometimes you'll lose your rares when they are played on curve. Not much you can do. 6-3, still respectable for a Celestia deck, which is regarded as one of the weaker guilds in Guilds of Ravnica. Did of course get lucky to get the Trostani late. Without Trostani, some of those games would have been a lot tougher. All right. Sweet. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.